right, hello everybody. Thank you all for coming. My name is Charles Oksher, Product Manager for Defender for Cloud. I'm joined today with fellow Product Manager, Lara Goldstein. And today, <laughs> we are so excited to be showcasing to you all the next wave of innovation coming to Defender for Cloud, transforming the way you all remediate your cloud risks through the power of Microsoft Copilot for Security. For our agenda today, we're going to start with some of the top cloud security challenges we see across the industry and that exist within all of your organizations. Next, we'll give a high-level overview of Defender for Cloud's cloud-native application protection platform solution and how it addresses these challenges. Then, we'll get into what you are all here to see, the new integration with Microsoft Copilot for security, transforming the way you conduct your risk exploration and risk remediation. After a demonstration of all of these new skills we've added to Copilot, we'll end with a Q&A, as I'm sure you all are going to be just as excited about these new <laughs> capabilities as we are. So when we talk about the top challenges we see in the cloud security across the industry, uh, it starts with a rather basic one, uh, but we still see is quite prominent. And it's simply a lack of visibility into the security and compliance state across all of your cloud workloads and DevOps environments. As the size of your organization scales, so does the number of these cloud workloads and DevOps environments that exist in production, making it incredibly difficult to configure all of the security tooling and security monitoring solutions you need to ensure that you have 100% visibility into the security posture state. Uh, even if you are able to get all of the tooling and monitoring you need configured, uh, you're often met with a rapid increase of security signal, making it impossible to effectively triage and prioritize those risks that matter the most. Next, honestly, attackers are just getting better. We see rapid improvements in the number and the sophistication of attacks performed, making it critical for all of your organizations to follow a set of security best practices. Lastly, almost all organizations today are adopting a multi-cloud approach to cloud infrastructure. And while that comes with many great advantages, uh, it makes it very difficult uh, to effectively manage security posture when there are so many nuances across cloud environments. Now, the worst part is when we look across the industry with risk management, uh, things are trending downwards. We see the average security team only remediates 13% of all vulnerabilities. Uh, not because we're not all incredibly passionate and working hard at addressing this, but it's because a lot of the time, security teams are off, uh, operating with a lack of resources, they're budget constrained. They simply don't have the manpower uh, to effectively uh, remediate all of the issues that exist across all of their environments. This results in the average time to remediation to be 30 days for a vulnerability. This leaves attackers with plenty of time to identify all of the attack vectors possible in your systems and exploit them. The worst part is 99% of these attacks could be mitigated with just basic security hygiene. Now, what's the answer to all of these problems? <laughs> Microsoft Defender for Cloud's Cloud Native Application Protection Platform which embeds a set of security and, compl and compliance capabilities across every stage of your cloud native application lifecycle. From build to deploy to runtime, you'll re receive integrated insights for application security testing, your external attack surface and internet exposure, uh, your cloud entitlements and permissions across all of your identities, uh, where your sensitive data exists and where you, there are vulnerabilities that can be exploited as well as network segmentation to ensure that an initial breach can't proliferate into something much worse. In addition, we provide all the integrations necessary for a SecOps practitioner to effectively manage and remediate this risk, from integrations with Sentinel to a native XDR integration, to workflow automation and ticketing and collaboration systems like ServiceNow. We want to equip your SecOps practitioners with all the tools they need to effectively remediate the risk in your environments. Now, one of the core pillars of the Microsoft Defender for Cloud CNAP solution is Microsoft Defender CSPM, which provides contextualized insights for all of the risks that exist in your multi-cloud environments. 
Uh, we use a number of risk factors to allow you to prioritize what matters most based on how attackers could exploit each of these risks in your systems. In addition, we provide a set of security standards and cloud policies to ensure everyone in your organization is following security best practices. We take a data-aware approach to cloud security posture management, ensuring that you all can harden the resources that contain your most sensitive data uh, that attackers are looking for. But as we know, attackers move very fast and only are moving faster, meaning you must be able to prevent this risk from reaching your production environment, because at that point, you're already left vulnerable. This is why we have a whole suite of DevOps security capabilities, allowing you to fix uh, all of these security issues and vulnerabilities before they can even reach production at the source code level. Lastly, we provide your security practitioners all of the collaborative tools they need to kick off remediation workflows and ensure a timely uh, mitigation to the risk that could potentially be exposed in your systems. Now, at the core of Defender CSPM is our cloud security graph. This provides a graph-based view of all the relationships between your cloud resources, your DevOps repositories, uh, and additional insights that attackers could use uh, to potentially uh, make lateral movements across your systems and exploit resources uh, after an initial breach in a completely different workload. Uh, we bring in insights from cloud workload protection, Sentinel, XVR, DevOps, your cloud infrastructure entitlements to give you a comprehensive graph-based view powered by both agentless and agent-based protection. Uh, this will allow you to visualize the exact paths an attacker could make, what lateral movements they could do to access different parts of your system and allow you to effectively remediate all the risk in your environment. Now, while all of this is great and it will allow you to effectively prioritize and remediate what risk matters the most, it simply isn't enough with the speed and scale attackers are starting to use through the power of generative AI. I'm going to hand things off to Lara now, who's going to show how we're reimagining the way we look at all of our solutions across Defender for Cloud's cloud native application protection platform. Thanks, Charles. Great overview. So what do we know about generative AI so far? We know that it can help us really give more power to the defenders. We know it can help scale humans more effectively and utilize them more strategically. We also know that it allows for a paradigm shift. We always know that human ingenuity and expertise will always be an irreplaceable component of defense, but we need technology that can augment these capabilities with the skill sets, processing speeds, and rapid learning of AI. Technology that can work for us, alongside us, and detect hidden patterns and behaviors and inform response at machine speed with the latest and most advanced security practices. AI allows us to get real-time visibility and context so we can investigate threats better and defenders can become more effective in responding to those threats and working on what really matters most. Instead of having to learn all of these separate tools and learn all of the different querying language that are part of these tools, you can use natural language prompts and you can collaborate more effectively with your other teammates. And Microsoft is very uniquely positioned to really transform security using artificial intelligence. Not only are we at the forefront of this artificial intelligence boom, but we also have an end-to-end -end security offering that covers endpoints, email software, um, uh, software as a service applications, and of course, cloud applications. And we also have a whole suite of identity and compliance tools as well. By integrating AI into all of these tools, we can really deliver end-to-end -end value for our customers with coordinated experiences across our entire suite. We can use this generative AI to really simplify all of our different tool sets and help organizations turn the table on attackers. 
We do this through Microsoft Copilot for Security, which is the first generative AI security product to really um, help defend organizations at the speed and scale of artificial intelligence. Since our an announcement of Microsoft Copilot for Security, which was over a year ago, the interest we've had has been unprecedented. It continues to combine the most advanced GPT-4 models with Microsoft-developed orchestration that allows us to intelligently understand what the customer is asking and what we can do to help the customer. And all of this is powered by our very unique expertise that we have from having end-to-end -end security and compliance offerings. We also have our global threat intelligence, which analyzes trillions of signals each day to truly understand where new and emerging threats are coming from. All of this in our comprehensive security products puts us in a very great place to lead this AI security revolution. And Today, we are super excited to announce that we are bringing the power of Copilot for security into Microsoft Defender for Cloud. This will be available in public preview on June 10th, and we will be able to bring even more efficiencies into Defender for Cloud and continue to help our customers accelerate their response times. We know that misconfigurations are the highest cause of data breaches, and we have a lot of tools that can surface this data already, but we also know that not every risk is created equal. We've done a lot of work to help with risk prioritization over the past couple of years, but we still know our customers are tired of the recommendations. There's a lot of noise, and we need to be able to help them filter through the noise and focus on what's most impactful. What's one thing that they can do now that will secure them exponentially? How can they just make one change that will replicate across tons of different instances and really get into the best place to have the lowest attack surface possible? And even when we continue to add to Defender for Cloud to help customers really prioritize what's most important, we will continue to bring generative AI into these capabilities as well. Today, with the Copilot integration, we have a few different skills that we're releasing. One of them is around performing risk exploration, and we're going to talk about these in more detail. But risk exploration is helping our security admins identify where they have misconfigurations, where they have vulnerabilities and weaknesses, and which of those weaknesses actually pose the biggest threat to the organization. And they can do all of this just through natural language queries using chat within the Defender for Cloud portal. But after you find out these recommendations that are the most critical, you still need to take action. Yes, you know what's most important, but it's just going to sit there unless you actually do something about it. So we're helping our customers actually speed up the time to remediate these issues by giving them ready-to-go remediation scripts in any scripting language of their choice. And even for code vulnerabilities, our security admin customers can now generate pull requests using Copilot that integrates into developer source code management systems to fix the issues automatically. With Copilot in Defender for Cloud, security admins can truly simplify the complexity by filtering through noise, catching what others may miss, um, and understand critical risks, and then accelerate the remediation of those. So let's talk about our first skill, which is assisted risk exploration. This really helps um, understand our customers. They are able to use Copilot, chat with Copilot, understand what is required of them to improve their cloud security posture. We can surface these different sorts of misconfigurations faster than ever by combining contextual insights that we get from the cloud security graph that powers Defender for Cloud and the intelligence of the generative AI tool that is Copilot for security. With this information, we're able to help customers share risk summaries um, and really 
drill down into what the main actions they can take are to improve their entire security posture. The next skill we have is around assisted risk remediation. This is really one of our game-changing features because it gives security admins step-by-step -step guidance on what actions they need to take to remediate issues, including even generating scripts for them in their scripting language of choice, whether they want to run it within Amazon CLI, Azure CLI, PowerShell, it doesn't matter. Copilot will be able to generate that script to help you remediate any of the recommendations that we detect in Defender for Cloud. Before we even provide the remediation script, we're still going to help the security admin understand why this is a risk, what are the different factors that contribute to it being a high severity risk or critical severity risk, whatever it's marked at, and the benefits of actually resolving the issue. This not only saves time by giving you all the information that you need, but it can also help train new and junior team members. Um, if the security admin isn't in the place to actually remediate the risk on their own by running one of these scripts that fixes the issue, that's totally okay because Copilot can also generate an email that will be sent to the resource owner that has already been identified and let that resource owner know why they need to address the issue and what they need to do to actually address that issue. And then last, but definitely not least, we're in, excited to introduce a new groundbreaking capability within Copilot that we're calling automated risk remediation. So instead of it being more assisted where you're running the script manually, we are automatically generating a pull request to fix any sort of misconfiguration that was detected within an infrastructure as code template. This is a really big step in our mission to empower our security admins and streamline DevOps security processes. We all know that infrastructure as code has revolutionized the way that we build and deploy resources, but we all know that this also comes with new security challenges. One misconfiguration in an infrastructure as code template can be propagated to hundreds or thousands of runtime resources which compromises the security and integrity of all of our applications and data. That's why we're giving security admins the ability to truly shift security left and remediate those issues at the source and make sure that they never get propagated to runtime. We don't want the issue to get to production in the first place because that's when issues can actually happen. All right. Um, now, probably a little bit more exciting, we do have a demo on these capabilities. When we're going through this demo, I just want to set some context. We are going to be looking at this through the lens of how a security administrator would interact with Microsoft Defender for Cloud. These are our key personas that we tend to work with, and our goal with Copilot was really to enhance their experience managing their cloud security posture, um, help them identify and remediate different sorts of recommendations that we find within their multi-cloud and DevOps environments. Some of the challenges that we know that security administrators face based on some of our interviews with them and conversations is really one, uh, two different areas. So there's focus. They don't know where to focus their time because they have so many different recommendations that they have to sort through, especially when they're not only using Azure, but they're also in AWS, GCP, and on cloud. Um, they are just drowning in recommendations. So we're trying to help them actually focus where they need to spend their time. And then the second one is expertise, especially when we look at the DevOps side, we know that our security administrator customers, they're not gonna be experts in fixing infrastructure as code templates. Maybe they are, and that's great, but that's not the typical persona that we tend to work with. But we still want to empower them to be able to make those changes and know that they can truly secure their infrastructure across the board without having to be a developer. All right, let's take a look now. So we're starting here within Microsoft Defender for Cloud. 
This is the overview page. We can see that we have resources coming from Azure, AWS, Google Cloud. We can see that we've assessed over 13,000 or 13,200 resources exactly. We have different sorts of attack paths and security alerts, and we have over 11,000 recommendations that we need to address. So let's look at these recommendations now. Looking at the recommendations, there is a long list with over 229 pages that we need to sort through. Um, as a security professional, I probably wouldn't know where to start, so that's why we have Copilot now. We can click on Analyze with Copilot, and we'll get some suggestions. So we can ask Copilot to show us different risks for publicly exposed resources or resources with sensitive data. We're going to select publicly exposed here. Copilot will think about it for a minute before it returns us some results. That helps us really narrow down this list and drill down to those recommendations that are going to be most impactful to resolved. So here we can see that there are 156 storage accounts, 64 virtual machines, 52 blob containers, 18 Kubernetes clusters. We have this list. And what we can do with this now is apply a filter. This brings down the list of recommendations we have, and we begin to actually be able to tailor our um, ability to sort through it. So for this, we're going to click on one of these recommendations called Management Ports on Virtual Machines Should Be Closed. On this recommendation, we have a variety of different risk factors. It's exposed to the internet. There are vulnerabilities. It's critical. We can see the graph with the different attack paths about how a virtual machine with vulnerabilities can then access a SQL virtual machine. We need to remediate it. So let's ask Copilot. Copilot is going to first summarize the recommendation, just kind of train us on why it's so important to address what sort of information we would need to give to someone if we need that help to remediate it. Um, it's giving us an overview, telling us about the risk factors, telling us who the remediation owner is. But I just want to remediate it. So I select Help Me Remediate. Now, when it's done thinking, it will return a remediation script for me. And this remediation script is Azure PowerShell. Um, and I can scroll up. And when I'm up there, I just click Run. That opens up Azure Cloud Shell. And I can remediate. But I'm not typically doing this as a security admin. So let's actually delegate it instead of running it. When we click on delegate this remedi uh, delegate remediation to the resource owner, Copilot will then generate an email for us that's ready to go and be sent to the owner that we see identified in this recommendation. We see the whole email laid out. It's looking at the resource owner. We can open it up, click send, and go. It's explaining what the risk is, why it's risky, and why they need to fix it. But this is when the risk is already in runtime. It's already in production. We want to avoid that moving forward. We don't want this to get here in the first place. So let's see what we can do on the code side. Here we have a recommendation to remediate infrastructure as code findings. When this loads, we are able to see we have some different sort of infrastructure as code misconfigurations within Azure DevOps repositories. So let's actually reduce the risk with Copilot. We're asking it to actually help us remediate this recommendation. It's giving us um, a response back saying that remediating it will help your security posture. So why don't you select one of the vulnerabilities and click on that. We'll remediate it. We're selecting containers should not run with allow privilege escalation. Copilot will then analyze the configuration file from the code and will generate a fix for us to fix that uh, misconfiguration of the container deployment file, allowing for privilege escalation. When it responds, it's giving us some details about the pull request that it's going to submit, because of course I want to be sure that it's in a good stage before I actually create a pull request and have my developers view it. So what I was confident about it, I click Submit. Now Copilot is going out and creating that pull request within Azure DevOps. When it's done, it's giving us the link to the pull request and just warning us that this is generated by AI. So 
you do want the developer to review it before they actually merge the code. Within Azure DevOps, we can see Copilot has created this pull request on behalf of the security admin that was in the portal. It's giving the developer a clear description as to what the misconfiguration was, why that is a risk about the container being able to escalate its privileges, and we can see exactly what was changed. Here, Copilot was able to add in security context and set allow privilege escalation to be false. And with this, as a security professional, I can be assured that any future deployments of this container are going to be secured as long as the developer approves this pull request. I don't have to worry anymore, and I can really feel safe and secure knowing that my environment is safe and my infrastructure is safe. So that is a quick demo of all of the new capabilities we have with Copilot that we are so excited about um, end to end across the entire application development lifecycle. So I know it's been a quick presentation so far, but we did want to leave plenty of time for Q&A. Before we get there, we just kind of want to highlight some of the key areas that we discussed. So with the Copilot for Security experience within Defender for Cloud, there were a variety of main, uh, a variety of different capabilities that we wanted to remind you of. So one is letting it give you a quick understanding of your cloud security posture. You can use Copilot for Security to explore any sort of open uh, recommendations that you have and query for what you want to see. Maybe you want to see all resources that have sensitive data and they are also marked as a critical resource. So you want to prioritize those first. It doesn't matter what you want to do. You just ask Copilot in natural language and it'll return the results for you. Next, we have guided remediation. So for any issues that were found in runtime resources, Copilot can then generate remediation scripts for you that you can just quickly run and apply. Or you can have it send an email to the resource owner telling them to remediate it. And then last, we have the automated remediation capabilities where we leverage Copilot for security to generate pull requests to fix issues in infrastructure as code accurately and um, really being able to reduce the time to remediation. I don't have to bug developers to remediate the issue. I'm just doing it all on my own. The developer accepts it and it's all done. The code is now merged and we're good to go. It's not this endless journey anymore. I don't have to convince my developers why you need to remediate it. Copilot is able to do all of that for us. And Honestly, this is really important because most issues in runtime do stem from infrastructure as code templates that provision those resources in the first place. So we're empowering our security admins to actually fix the issues at the source without being experts in developing infrastructure in the first place. All they need to do is use Defender for Cloud. Before we go into Q&A, we just want to Make sure you know that you are more than welcome to talk to us, join tech community, um, and come to the ballroom on level five to continue any sort of conversations with us and tell us how you plan to use Copilot for security and Defender for Cloud. And after that, we have some additional sessions coming up. So one, you can scan this QR code to see more sessions as well as details about this one so you can know how to reach Charles and I. Um, and we also have a session tomorrow, a demo, Dem 767 at 9.15 AM. And we'll do a little bit of a more, de like go deeper into Defender for Cloud and show more of the capabilities there. So we do hope you come to that. Great. Questions? <laughs> All right. I think someone yeah, is coming a with a mic. You. Don't worry. Got it. Stand away from it. Now. Oh. 
Um, if there's a great number of vulnerabilities that exist that all have a common fix, for example, um, and it spans maybe a hundred different repos, is there a way to blanketly say submit PRs for all of these at once, or is it limited to just identifying them one at a time in order to create those PRs? In the initial release, we are doing one at a time because first, we want to make sure that developers actually feel confident with those fixes. We don't want to just have like one PR with 100 different files being changed and then they have to go through each and every one. We want to take this slow. But when we build that trust, when developers are actively approving the PRs, we know that it's not interrupting their workflows. That's when we can begin to expand. It's more about us wanting to help our customers trust AI versus like technical limitations. So don't worry about it. Like we, we are going in that direction, but it's going to be a journey. Thanks. Yeah. Um, hi, what was a bit unclear for me was um, how do you connect to the, the Git repository and how are other Git repositories also uh, supported beyond Azure DevOps? Yeah. Great question. Let's see if I can share my screen here and actually show it live. We'll find out. Um, let me stop presenting the slideshow. Let me help. There we go. OK, we can go to portal.azure.com. And within Defender for Cloud, we have the ability to let you connect to multi-cloud or multi-pipeline environments. So we do have support for Azure DevOps, GitHub, and GitLab to actually um, onboard to Defender for Cloud and begin to see security findings for any of those source code management systems. So here we have environment settings, add environment, you select Azure DevOps, and then you just create this connector. You'll configure access to give it us permissions to actually be able to scan your repos, ingest those results from the scanning, but this is really all you need to do to do that and set that up and begin to leverage these different sorts of integrations and features. Does that help? Does that answer it? We can always uh, attach some more resources to the session about configuring it. Yeah. I'm getting my steps in today. <laughs> Uh, you kind of touched on it, but I was wondering if you have any plans to go into posture management for third-party SaaS applications, mapping back to identities, checking to make sure users don't have more than one way to access an application, things like that. Really good question. So we don't have plans to do that in Defender for Cloud because there is another Microsoft security product that does that. It's actually called Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps, which isn't confusing at all. But that is our <laughs> software as a security posture management offering. It also does threat detections for uh, third party software applications. So definitely recommend checking that out. It's a really neat product and it has a whole suite of different capabilities and identity sorts of monitoring. Come on, any other questions? Yeah. So uh, we've used uh, Microsoft Defender for Cloud quite a bit, and uh, kind of as you presented, a lot of the issues crop up with uh, new new deployments. Um, have you guys thought about looking at uh, a lot of the defaults that exist in the deployments to kind of shore them up before they even reach um, Microsoft Defender for Cloud, like do an analysis across a lot of the issues and try and shore that up at the actual uh, deployment level? Do you mean in infrastructure as code, or do you mean just like when you are deploying in Azure Resource Manager template, like during that deployment process, like if I go to 
Azure Resource Manager here. So I think one of the ones that you had was like uh, insecure ports or something, right? So that's something that you can actually put in the configuration to start with. Um, right. Instead of waiting until after everything's deployed and then go run Microsoft Defender for Cloud and realize that everything's right. Available, right? Yeah, that's why we have our DevOps security offering to scan your infrastructure within code in the first place to prevent those issues from ever reaching runtime. Like the whole idea of shifting security left, fixing at the source um, before you get there in the first place. But not everything's going to be perfect. Like you might have a developer that deploys anyways or something like that. So we are always going to have this idea where we catch the issues in runtime. But with DevOps security and our connections to GitHub, Azure DevOps and GitLab, we do want to help you actually find and address those issues before yeah, they reach I, runtime. I think it's more of like a, an and for a CNAP, right? Not an or. So what you saw today, it's like once it's, you're already vulnerable, once it's already reached production, how do you remediate from there? Uh, part of a CNAP is right. we have to embed these security capabilities, these guardrails at every stage, at build time, at deploy time. Um, and you know we're still evolving in that space, especially at build and deploy time. Um, but that is something that's top of mind for us: is how you know at every single stage of the life cycle, you have all of like the policy guardrails you need to ensure uh, you know that critical vulnerabilities don't make it to production. Obviously, sometimes things slip through the cracks; it's hard to catch everything. Um, so this, you know, it's kind of an and where then if it does make it in, you still have this automated remediation workflow. So I'd, just to quickly add to that, so would Copilot be able to help identify policies that could be added to prevent that vulnerability in the first place, uh, ignoring the infrastructure as code piece? No, I don't think we're using Copilot for that initially because Copilot is more like helping you remediate what already is identified. Um, we're not going to use Copilot to discover those risks in the first place because we do have built-in policies for that already that um, they're based on like best practices from different compliance standards like CIS, um, what else, NIST. Uh, so we have those recommendations built in already. I don't think we're going to be doing too much with like integrating Copilot capabilities there to detect issues or even help you like yeah, in the first place, but it will help with remediation and we'll see what other sort of use cases that our customers are asking for in the future as well. It's, a, it's like an evolution though, right? Where uh, as we evaluate, if we do see that large, large language models are effective at identifying and suggesting policies to use in certain situations, uh, we're kind of capturing the value wherever we can right now. Like I said, uh, kind of towards the beginning, like every way we are kind of doing things in Defender for Cloud, we're uh, reimagining how we can do it uh, to make it more, you know, more effective with generative AI. If that is something we uh, can kind of see value in, um, we're going after. But to Lair's uh, point, it's not something that's kind of in our immediate plans. Thanks. I know we had a question up here. You showed some of the uh, use cases, or you mentioned here that more towards the infrastructure or hardware level, right? I mean, ports and whatnot. Are there any use cases that you have covered around AppSec, which talks about the code challenges that we have, some of the code vulnerabilities that we have? Yeah, that's the integration we have with infrastructure as code to start with. So like the infrastructure as code templates within your source code repositories. Um, that's our first step in actually fixing code and making sure that you are secure across the board. But like with Defender and Cloud in general, we are presenting code vulnerabilities that you have or open source vulnerabilities from your code. So that exists within Defender for Cloud, but for the beginning of the integration with Copilot, we're focusing on like remediating issues from infrastructure as code versus more general code vulnerabilities. So it's just more like IT, IT sec versus AppSec? For our first scenario, I would say we're kind of yeah. we're 
testing our first scenario with IAC, seeing how it does. Obviously, it's a very nascent technology. We have to make sure it's you know, not breaking uh, production environments because people are merging pull requests that end up uh, not being great generated by uh, Copilot. Uh, but it's going to evolve, right? And it's expanded to other scanning types beyond static or just infrastructure as code scanning in terms of static analysis. Thank you. Thank you. How is this technology priced? How do we pay for it? What will it cost us? Great question. So um, Copilot for security does have a pay-as-you-go billing model. You purchase something called security compute units. And with those, you can leverage Copilot for security in any sort of Microsoft security experience that you're using. Um, for just Defender for Cloud in general, to like really make the most of Copilot for security, you would want to use a plan called Defender Cloud Security Posture Management, which is billed per, per um, any sort of, like we, we have a list of billable resources, and we do a pay-as-you-go charge on a monthly basis. You're, you're paying for the different resources you have that we are securing, and that also gives you all the DevOps security capabilities, too. So it'll be a mix of Defender for Cloud and Copilot for security. Anyone else? Is anyone excited? Anything that anyone wants to try out first with Copilot for security and Defender for Cloud? You can raise your hand and tell Not us. Not all at once. Yeah, don't all <laughs> jump at once. Is it the pull requests? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Question. A lot of the uh, <clears throat> Azure products kind of have like an easy trial kind of a thing. Yeah. This one's a little bit scary. Yeah. So you go and look at the product in the marketplace, and then, and then it gives you this big warning, and then. You're wondering if, like, tomorrow you're going to have some giant cost just <laughs> show yeah. up in your tenant. So uh, I've been wanting to try it out, but I'm too scared to hit the big button. Are, are you talking about Copilot for security? Yes. Or oh, OK. Fair enough. Um, it is pay as you go. So. I might be going all night. I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> The telemetry data is coming in. All this is happening. Yeah. Um, so what constitutes a billable hour? Maybe that's more of a question. For a copilot for security. Right. So, yeah. so is it when somebody's actively using it like, uh, and um, getting information from it? Or is it c when it's collecting all its data in the back end? That's a great question. And then um, is it easy to turn off? <laughs> Should be. <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, I'm, I'm very interested in trying this out. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's kind of a. It's scary. Yeah. I, um, it's easy to shut a VM down and stop paying for it. So but the security. Yeah, I know. Like, it, it's the idea of like the security compute unit where it is like how much processing is actually required by the prompts. I don't know what the Copilot team has done in terms of like giving you ways to estimate the cost at the beginning, like before you start using it. But if you come up to me at the end of the session, I'll get your email and I can connect you with someone from Copilot for security that can hopefully try to help. And Same. we can publish some information with this uh, presentation too. There's also lots of folks from yeah. the Copilot for security team up on the fifth floor. Yeah, I'd please go up there. The experts and we can get yeah. it resolved. Ask them all your pricing questions. <laughs> Anything else before we wrap up, folks? There's one question online about mm -hmm. remediating system vulnerabilities by applying system patches. Remediating system vulnerabilities by, remedi by applying system patches. That's also something that's not in the first scope here, like remediating different vulnerabilities. We do have different sorts of 
tools within Microsoft where you can do that through Intune or something along those lines. But there are so many use cases that we can explore with Copilot for security. So this is really just the beginning of what we're doing. And we hope that you guys all stay tuned to see what else we release. Great. Well, thank right you all time. for attending. We much appreciate you all coming, taking time out of your builds. Uh, we hope you all go off uh, once this is in private preview. Try it out. Uh, and have a great rest of your build, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.